grand strategy games are without a doubt the signature of Swedish developer and publisher Paradox Interactive, having in their roster no less than six active franchises, which include Crusader King, Europa, Europa Universities, Victoria, Hearts of Iron, Stellaris and more. And since we recently got a brand new game from the studio in the form of Victoria 3, I thought that it would be a good time to guide you through each of these titles, just in case you were confused about their differences and what you should be expecting from these games because as you are going to see they can be quite different and uh, be rather demanding if you do not set your expectations appropriately so uh, for the purpose of this video I will organize the franchises based on our real-world uh, historical timeline and uh, here I'm going to show you where these games stands and so we'll start with Imperator Rome which is a successor to another game from another franchise Europa Universalis Rome so Technically, it's part of Europa Universities, but I believe that Paradox here is trying to branch out, so we'll give it a part of its own. And as the name suggests, uh, Imperator Rome lets you uh, set a nation, take a nation between 340 BC to 27 AD. Uh, which uh, is the timeline around the time when the Roman Republic developed into the juggernaut that it became, um, turning into a true empire. So what sets Imperium, uh, Imp Imperator Rome for, apart from Europa Universalis is that it takes part, uh, it takes parts of the other games that we are going to talk about later when it comes to leader management, uh, population, economy management, which could be explained perhaps due to the later arrival of the title, which allowed the developers to cherry pick features that they liked from other titles and add them in this Europa University spin-off. I think that this title would therefore suit you if you particularly enjoy this time period, but I would not recommend it uh, as your first Paradox game due to uh, the uh, inclusion of many different uh, aspects from the other games uh, that, it, that it borrowed them from. Next uh, comes what I believe is the most popular franchise of the studio, which is Crusader Kings. So Crusader Crusader Kings starts from the, the early to the late Middle Ages and focuses on the ruling dynasty of the country of your choosing. Through intrigues and diplomacy, your goal is to make your family lineage the most powerful in the known world. Now, this can also include uh, warfare and conquest. Uh, we're talking about the game uh, that takes place in the Middle Ages after all. And of course, through your own personal decisions that are going to affect the outcome of the game, which basically makes Crusader King an interesting mix between grand strategy and a role-playing game. Following Crusader Kings, we move up to the timeline and we are getting to the king of grand strategy games, and that is Europa Universalis. Now, Europa Universalis, for me, is the most interesting game out of all of the titles that will be mentioned today because of all of the different aspects of history when it comes um, that it covers, including, for example, the Hundred Years' War, colonization, wars of religion, and the birth of humanism, which eventually leads to revolutions and the, uh, and the Napoleonic Wars. It is also uh, very interesting to see the country you are playing follow its course throughout history or experience a completely different path, turning your gameplay experience into a wonderfully crafted game of alternate history, from which you can't help but wonder what if. Something that uh, you will also be able to experience uh, in the next title, by the way, that we're going to talk about. Unlike Imperator Rome or Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis does not focus on, uh, on individual characters or population groups, but more on the grand picture of world affairs. Relations with other nations is key to success, and only a proper, carefully planned strategy will allow you to survive the deadly concert of nation that will present itself to you. For example, the war on Austria that you are seeing here on screen took me about 100 years to prepare, but once it successfully unfolded, the level of satisfaction I got was just unparalleled. Um, <laughs> take that, von Habsburg. Moving forward, we are going to cover the Industrial Revolution with the Victoria series that just got a new game released, Victoria 3, that I am going to review once I have enough hours with it. While Victoria lets you take lets you take part in warfare at a much lower degree of micromanagement than uh, European Universalis, the game focuses more on the society of the country itself 
as you are really going to manage how your country is run when it comes to the economics, its political life, its infrastructures, and its trade, both domestic and international. And it's really where you have the biggest difference between European Universalists and Victoria, because all of these aspects of a nation in European Universalists remain very superficial, while in Victoria they require the amount of micromanagement that your armies would need in European Universalists, uh, thus providing players with a completely different gameplay experience. While warmongers and players thirsty for world domination will thrive in European Universalists, Victoria is more for the manager, those who like to keep things optimized. It doesn't mean that you can't wage war or pursue world domination. Of course you can. It's just that it's going to be much more complicated and will require you to be much more subtle. Next comes Heart of Iron, which picks up the timeline in 1936, right where Victoria ends. And to make it short, if Victoria is your Industrial Age simulator, Heart of Iron is your World War II simulator. In Heart of Iron, the economy of, of your population isn't really the, the focus, uh, although politics do play an important role regarding the decisions that you will take for your nation. Heart of Iron is more about creating a war machine that will allow you to dominate, if not survive, the upcoming conflict that has been brewing for already quite a while, but also its aftermath as it Alliance get broken and societies open up or become completely totalitarian. Whether the world becomes a better place or a worse place depends on your political and military skills, which makes Heart of Iron a very interesting game if you're into battle strategy and micromanaging your units. Last but not least, we'll jump into the future with Stellaris. So it uses the same game engine as the previous games, but it is set in space. This time you can choose a civilization among the stars, whether it is humanity or maybe uh, whatever you want, maybe including even the fungi species from uh, the other side of the Milky Way. Your goal as a leader of your species will be to explore and ensure its survival and progress. This can be done with alliances, assimilation, or conquest, but of course you'll have to be careful because space is dangerous and you never know what may lurk in the dark, whether it's a fallen empire seeking retribution or an AI that concluded and all life forms had to be eradicated. If you love the grand strategy genre but you prefer space over history, this may be your game as Stellaris is actually very similar to Europa Universalis, but of course in a different setting. And so guys, that is it for this little guide about Paradox Interactive Games. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below, guys, have you ever tried one of these games? Which one is your favorite? As far as I'm concerned, it's definitely Europa Universalis 4. I, love, I really like Stellaris as well. Very intrigued with uh, Victoria that I am playing right now and I'm trying <laughs> I'll definitely make a review of it. I guess we'll see if it's positive or not. But I'd like to know your feedback. Have, maybe you'd like to try one of those games you've never tried before and this guide helped you a little bit. Well, I would like to know that as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. It's been The Eradicator and I will see you guys later.